Okay, hi there. So, I've been inactive for a while because I've been busy. And, yeah, being busy, like, basically I was busy with this and with work and things. Like, this is also work, so, yeah, you might get an update on this at some point. But I was just taking this thing apart because, well, we want to throw it away because it's broken. And I decided, well, let's take a look at it. So what this is, is a thermostat, and this is how it's looking assembled in one piece. Uh, you put it on your uh, heater, instead of the normal turny thingy, like this. And it's supposed to be, uh, supposed to um, regulate your, uh, the heater by, uh, yeah, by extending this pin instead of you do the turny thingy which actually has a has its own uh, mechanical <laughs> mechanical mechanism has, has its own mechanism to uh, do that just that it just well doesn't uh, have like a night mode and shit for weekdays whatever this thing can do or could do <clears throat> um, but yeah so I decided to take it apart and it became apparent that it's a tad bit over-engineered. Just teeny tiny bit. It's ridiculous. Like, okay, so, um, yeah, so I, I reassembled it so you could see it kind of in one piece. But, yeah, I'm going to put this down here and just unplug the things. This is ridiculous. Okay, you see, came apart into a few pieces. You have this, which is a huge knob. Um, which has, <laughs> which is, I guess, injection molded, which must have been a fucking pain in the ass because of these uh, retainer clip parts here. Like, how do you mold this? How, how do you eject it? You have to make a form that can retract this piece. So, yeah, expensive. Uh, God dang it. <laughs> Come here. So, <clears throat> expensive form uh, that you have for ejection, injection molding. Um, for this piece um, and you <laughs> notice here in the middle there's there's nothing here and that's because it fucking broke off there's one piece and there's another piece um, this was plugged into this tiny rotary encoder um, so okay yeah we got this thing out of the way we could get to this in a second um, <coughs> next part okay battery compartment is actually fairly standard but this is one huge injection molded part with like so many th oh god i'm i'm filming somewhere else sorry but yeah here battery compartment a lot of things going on um <clears throat> same here there's so much shit going on in this piece i mean at least yeah it's also hard to eject because it has these pins here um which are even stronger here for some reason but yeah, you have <coughs> different pins. What plastic is this anyway? Does it say it anywhere? Can you see something? Probably can't. Does it say it on here? Nope. So, I guess it's... Let's just make a guess and say it's ABS. Because it's really brittle. <laughs> and I don't know if ABS is that brittle. But I guess it is. So, <coughs> yeah, the thing is... Um, the retainer clip up here broke, so it just fell off the the heating, uh, and that's bad. So, yeah. Also, this thing broke off, but it wasn't even under any stress. So, I don't know. These parts on the outside are supposed to take the main force, not these. I don't know why the fuck <laughs> did this one break broke off. So, yeah. <clears throat> so we have I don't know the wrong kind of plastic used. And ridiculous injection molding. Okay, then we come to this. I just pressed the button on the camera, but it doesn't seem to mind. <clears throat> okay, so we come to this. This is, if you look at it, a USB port. But this does not look like a USB device. We'll come to this in a second. <clears throat> okay, let's concentrate on this. So what you see here, you see several screw holes. So there were four screws. One, two... One on top here in the middle, and one here. Four screws, and you have an 
an extra PCB. So I'm gonna unscrew this for you with the right screwdriver and without throwing the camera on the floor. It's 12 degrees C in here, so my hands are kind of... Well, this is also coming off. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so when I first disassembled it, it stood on there. But yeah, let's, let's take a look at this. Uh, without the screws. One screw. Next screw. <clears throat> I'm going to put it back in the plastic so you can see how it comes apart. Okie dokie. So here you go. You have this thing, so you can pull it out in one assembly. Okay, but then, come on, it's another part that's injection molded. Like it's it's ridiculous how much things are on here. Okay, I have two hands to get this apart. So yeah, here you see the PCB board. Here you see this thing, which by the way also has a crack. It was never under any stress except like when it was assembled so I don't know <laughs> why it broke but yeah that broke too and then you have this retainer clip for the USB board which has a whole USB uh, plug thingy and this like how many are there so the USB has five and the cable has six why there's nothing else on here you see a lot of wires because they were pr apparently worried about the current that was delivered over this thing like i mean this is a this, this the the plug is specified respect for uh two two amps that's it you can't put more over it like what is this thing oh, i don't know so yeah over engineering here <coughs> strangely though they did put a pluggy thing on here they just directly uh, attached this thing <laughs> on here I don't know uh, I've seen this on several boards yet I don't know why the fuck they bothered to put a piece of plastic there if they solder it directly onto the board but yeah <coughs> plug on the other side so we have this uh, rather chunky cable you could do this with a flex or something something really cheap <coughs> Because, well, you need the power carrying capabilities, but you could do the rest with, with a flex. Um, because the only thing else that's going over it is a Hall effect sensor. Okay, so we got the USB thing out of the way. <clears throat> you see, like, <laughs> these ejection model parts are fucking expensive. Um, yeah, let's get to this. Uh, which I have to unscrew again because I screwed it back in. Come on. I screwed it in with a lot of force, it seems. God dang it, all my fingers are finally coming off. I don't know. It's fucking cold here. <clears throat> okay, so we have the board. Come on. Okay, I, I need to. Move. Sorry. Okie dokie, we have a zebra stripe and a display. Um, the display has some printed on. Why, why, why was there a signal just now? Did you see that? Oh, there, there, there was. It just touched things on a zebra stripe and it happened. I don't know. Well, <laughs> probably really sensitive display. But okay, so we have a display with a zebra stripe. Not that uh, uncommon. You see those pretty often. Okay, let's look at this. We have a fucking big blob. Like a huge blob. And I actually don't know, what because we have here an Admega device which is a let me read that to you because you can't see it on the camera which doesn't have focus at mel 258 and the second line 24 c o 2 n third line s u 27 d so yeah that's whatever that is um <clears throat> then we have i guess these two are regulators um or maybe are the transistors? I actually don't know. I tried to trace it out and see if the power led to one of these small transistors over here um, for the USB, but I don't care. We have a thermistor over here. Tiny thermistor. I'm amazed that they didn't use a thermocouple. <laughs> so over the engineered how this is. Okay, so 
this part of the board it's it's okay except for that huge blob why the fuck would you go through the trouble of doing this this is a another step in production i mean this is apparently a low volume thing because <laughs> that's fucking expensive or maybe they just produced a lot of them and then they were like oh no it's buying them fuck so yeah you have two caps on here like why i don't know you probably need a bit of deep coupling for the chips and then you just <laughs> relay the power to the motor like just it directly from batteries okay the thing um if you notice something there there's like this thing here and a piece of plastic another piece of injection molded plastic which is fused to these this piece of metal holding <laughs> the rotary encoder like i don't know <laughs> i'm pretty sure there are better better methods to do this like cheaper ones especially so yeah <clears throat> That's it about the board. At least we have just cheap buttons here. Um, and now we come to the motor, which, like, when I took it apart, I was like, I really have to make a video now. This is getting ridiculous. I mean, it's not that ridiculous, but look at this. Okay, so here on the top, just a normal gear, and which should actually drive this thing up and down. I haven't actually tested this if it still works but yeah nothing else is moving so that's probably moving this thing up and down okay so now we look at this we see a custom piece of extruded aluminium up here now we take the rest of it out and we see a USB which is held on by yet another piece of plastic injection molded So we take that off <clears throat> and we are greeted by USB, M1, M2, a resistor and three pins. What could that be? A Hall effect sensor. So you know the speed of the motor for this application. Which doesn't make much sense I guess except if you are like oh god it's blocked what am I gonna do like eh. <clears throat> I mean just do some overcurrent thingy I don't know <laughs> but yeah so you get another custom PCB which is just powering the motor <clears throat> then you have yet another piece of <laughs> injection molded plastic which has a crack here can you see that there's a crack yeah so it cracked even here for no reason at all <laughs> then you see some uh, pieces of PVC pipe mat or whatever it is that were there to properly space the board away from the metal then if you look here you see a piece of bent metal I don't know it just didn't fit on the custom piece of aluminum which is encasing the the gearbox <laughs> so yeah that that's it for the motor like they went to, through the trouble to make like custom things for everything. This thing must have been a nightmare to develop. And in the end it just failed because the fucking plastic broke everywhere. <laughs> Motor. <laughs> um, the fucking USB which was never actuated. Maybe once. I think I took it out once. Well it was here. The broken one. I took it out once to see what the fuck's in there. <clears throat> and then I took it out now. And disassembled it and reassembled it once but there's no fucking stress on the thing like why does it break i didn't hear it break now so it must be either really shitty plastic <laughs> because they tried to save costs there <clears throat> out of all the things let's save costs at the plastic not maybe in the over overall engineering but yeah this thing <laughs> i don't know is this a swiss company let's see no, it's actually, well, it's imported by Pearl GmbH. So, I don't know what imported means in this case. It doesn't say anything. Apparently, it's, it says it's uh, able to not notice if the, the window is open. So, <clears throat> oh my god. 
what a nice device but yeah <laughs> doesn't say anything about where it's from so why the fuck it was imported but probably made in china then i don't know who engineered it but yeah usually you get this over engineering from the swiss but apparently also from the germans yay my country woo okay <clears throat> yeah i just wanted to show you this thing because this is ridiculous this this is costing so much like nowadays you can buy these tiny motors which i actually have over here with a built-in gearbox i mean yeah this is a really weak one but you can get bigger ones also has a sensor at the back which i actually had to replace because this one had a faulty one that also made it super cheap but these discs back here that you have to replace are like i think 80 cents which is a lot for such a disc but you could only get them from one supplier and they charged 80 cents but it's still cheaper than buying a functional motor <clears throat> but yeah you can get these motors in bigger like this size uh, with feedback <laughs> I don't know why they went through the trouble to do this and <laughs> why they I don't know you can actually purchase also the gearboxes separately so you can just slap on a bigger motor yeah I don't know <laughs> this is this is ridiculous and then they also went through the trouble of fixing certain things by hand. You see there's like still some uh, flux residue on the thing. The whitish stuff. And you also see some on the capacitors here. <coughs> yeah, so it was hand assembled too. For no reason at all. Well, probably assembled by Chinese people because that's how crappy that looks. Um, but yeah. <laughs> A bit of over-engineering and now it's just broken. I'm gonna take some parts out of it. Yay! <clears throat> anyway, that's it for this video. And yeah, I don't know when I will talk to you next because I don't really have anything that I'm working on now. Now that the uh, heat gun works again <clears throat> and it's freaking cold. Like, I can't really stand here for long. You already might hear that I'm a bit sick, so standing in 12 degrees C air or even colder because it will get cold if windows open because we have tortoises which uh, have to sleep and they optimally would need 5 degrees C. Yeah, so that's really, really cold to stand in, even if you have a, uh, a jacket. So I will probably not do much here <coughs> in the near future. And I will also, might, I might have to move for six months from here. So I will have to, uh, yeah, also take some of these things with me um, into my temporary new home. <coughs> so I can uh, tinker with things there, but only small things like mostly this because this is still not finished because the person i'm making it for is waiting for another one of these or these like one of these esp32 ones because he fried his one um <clears throat> so he's waiting for that coming from china which takes long 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 time so i gotta wait for that so well it, he should have it within the next two weeks but then i have to move <clears throat> Uh, but at least the hardware side is mostly done. The only annoying thing is um, I have to reprogram these several times to fix bugs and everything. And this computer <coughs> isn't strong enough to do that. Like it, it can do Arduinos. These use Arduino too, but um, they're quite large projects and they have their own compiler and everything that comes with them because they're not an Edmega. Uh, AVR based thing <clears throat> yeah and it already takes uh, 15 seconds on my computer and this computer has a hard time running a browser or modern one <clears throat> a really hard time I went back to um, the other browser which is a well kind of um, yeah kind of next version of the old Opera one <clears throat> and that one actually works really good because it apparently puts out a 
uh, an identification to the server that well the server doesn't know so the server is like okay i'm gonna send you the the least amount of features no fucking scripts no anything and everything works fine on on this old computer so it can it's fine with displaying websites that don't have javascript enabled but it, it has its problems um, with javascript and currently i'm using it to rescue this hard disk because this broke for no reason i don't know maybe someone tipped it over maybe someone hit it it has a few broken sectors um, like according to the rescue software that's currently 94 kilobytes and that was 86 like an hour ago so there's multiple <coughs> broken uh, parts on that so that's bad but yeah it's copying at five megabytes a second this is a one terabyte drive and i'm copying it onto this five terabyte drive and a whole raw image is what i'm doing so it's running for 12 and a half hours now we are 238 gigabytes that's a lot of stuff but yeah i'm just gonna let this run for another 36 hours maybe a bit more and then it should be done <laughs> yeah the last time it it stopped after three hours because i used the wrong disk and it, it was full because i copied it on the internal one but okay enough of this <clears throat> we m might have a video in the future i don't know about what like this is an old radio that i took apart but nothing interesting on there <laughs> and i can't really unsolder the interesting parts because i don't have a desoldering gun i got this thing here uh like a, this one of the tiny ones i don't know if it's on there so i basically have a dremel now and it works it's not broken <laughs> Yeah, no, nothing really what I could show you except things like this maybe something else pops up and I show you <clears throat> but that's it for now so bye bye